Right. Hello and welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Sally Hogg. I am the Deputy Chief Exec of the Parent Infant Foundation and also the coordinator of the First Thousand One Days movement. For those of you who don't know about the movement, and I'm hoping most of you do, we're a campaigning alliance of 200 charities and professional bodies. And we work together to communicate about the importance of Conception to Two, that's the First Thousand One Days, and to campaign for changes in local and national policy that support the development of babies and their early relationships with their parents and their emotional and social well-being. Um, so we have, for the last six months, been hosting monthly webinars where members of the First 1001 Days or partner organisations can talk about the work that they do and share that and other organisations and professionals have the chance to, to ask questions and discuss and think about what that work means for them and what they're doing. So I'm absolutely delighted to welcome the team from One Plus One and partners to talk about their work in First Thousand Days today. Um, so I'm not going to say much more. I'm going to hand over uh, to Verity and Shannon and Helen um, and Sharon, who's also going to be joining us, for them to give you a presentation about the work they're doing. And then we'll have a little bit of time at the end uh, for some questions and answers and discussions. So if anything has occurred to you as you listen to the presentation, please do use the Q&A function at the bottom of um, the screen to put your questions and then we can have a chance to talk about those. So I'm going to disappear now and uh, turn into the, the uh, slides for the presentation and hand over to the wonderful One Plus One team to talk to you about their work. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Um, it's great to see someone from Australia has joined us. <laughs> Not feeling jealous. Um, okay, so I will um, uh, just say next slide when we're on to um, when we're moving along. Thanks, Sally. Uh, next slide, please. Ooh, there we go. Next slide. We've got quite a few of these uh, nice introduction slides. <laughs> next slide, please. <laughs> we'll get there. Here we are. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Verity, as per the previous slide, and thank you for taking the time out to hear from us today. Um, I know that life is really busy um, and continues to be so. So hopefully there's some be some helpful takeaways from you, for you today. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with One Plus One, uh, we are an early intervention relationship support charity. We're rooted in relationship science and we're focused on developing digital early intervention resources for practitioners and parents. We have a tried and tested approach in designing these resources, which is um, outlined here on this slide. So we um, identify the common causes of relationship breakdown. We explore the evidence. We look at effective ways to offer help early. We um, create the interventions and the resources and we evaluate and we continue to learn and develop our resources as we go. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about one of those resources, uh, Me, You and Baby 2, which includes in the title, uh, it's, it's for um, new parents. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So becoming a new parent, I'm pretty sure all of you will be familiar with this particular slide. Um, relationship satisfaction declines, as we can see here. So Me You and Baby 2 was designed to target couples at the transition to parenthood. And the reason for this is it represents a window of opportunity, a time where parents are eager for information and where they are already in access with it, accessing services at this point. It's also, as we know, a time when relationship quality traditionally declines. So it's an opportunity for us to provide an, in, an intervention. And Me, You and Baby 2 was designed to capitalise on this window by providing resource to help parents develop coping and conflict management skills through established and trusted support services. And that would be through uh, family support workers, health visitors um, and other avenues where um, parents may be in touch with services. Next slide, please. So we wanted to target relationship quality. Me and Baby 2 is designed to improve relationship quality because we know increased relationship quality reduces conflict. It's also about modeling healthy behaviors as we've pointed out here. And this in turn improves children's well-being and 
in the future their life chances. Next slide, please. And so why do parent relationships matter? I'm pretty sure that this is really familiar to you where quality is low, conflict is usually high. And we know where children are exposed to frequent, more destructive conflict, then their physical and mental health is affected and there are knock-on effects in the future, for example, with adult relationships, employment and psychological well-being. Next slide, please. So it's not all doom and gloom. We can make a difference. And this is why we've designed Me, You and Baby 2. I'm sure, again, you're going to be familiar with this, but we know that, as this slide shows, if you do intervene to improve relationship skills, parents won't see as much of a decline in relationship quality. So this is why we think it's important that parents can have access to Me, You and Baby 2. And we saw this improvement reflected in our first evaluation of Me, You and Baby 2, which was tested with over a thousand new parents using the Baby Buddy app where the content was sitting. And we found that using Me, You and Baby 2 improves relationship quality and reduces parental conflict. And I know that Shannon will talk to you a little bit more about that uh, later in more depth. Uh, next slide, please. So how do we create our resources? I touched upon a process at the beginning, just where we explained who we are. Um, Me, You and Baby 2 and our other digital interventions are based on behavior modeling training theory. So we take the behavior change theory, we take our knowledge of digital learning, for example, live action videos, graphics, importance of activities, importance of developing various content, very content, and then we take the often difficult to understand relationship science and we put this all together and turn it into something that is relatable and accessible for parents to be able to develop and learn skills through. Next slide, please. So just to kind of take you through what Me and Baby 2 looks like when parents are, and practitioners are accessing it. Um, you can see here, it's very simple. It looks very simple. It's easy to use, simple structure. It's optimized for mobile, which we'll try to show you here. So parents can work through it at their own pace. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and it accommodates all learning styles. With all of our digital interventions, we work to accommodate all learning styles. Practitioners work with a range of parents with a range of needs, and we know that not all parents find it easy to engage with content or stick with content. So we prioritise making our resources engaging, relatable, and um, the most important thing is something that people can take away and develop skills from. Next slide, please. And here's uh, just a little visual for how the course structure is broken up. It's divided into three sections. Um, and again, it, can sh it just shows you how parents can pick, you know, one module, work through it, another, work through it, and another. So working through it at their own pace. And next slide, please. So really just looping back to the engaging and the interactive content and the importance of developing this. During our evaluation, mothers that we spoke to praised the simplicity and the accessibility of the content. The videos were noted as the most helpful part of the resource. And parents described them as being helpful because they were relatable and they referred to things like the daily settings and the real life scenarios. So this feedback has been really helpful for us to understand that actually the, the content that we're developing is relatable, it is engaging, and parents are sticking with it when they get to the course uh, content. So what we're gonna do is show you two videos. Thank you. <laughs> the first one um, is an animation and the second one is a live action video. Um, so hopefully it will give you an idea of the kind of variation of content that we provide as well. Um, and the first one is an animation of the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors um, cycle. So if you could play that, please. The better? Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. 
is this a familiar situation? Your partner does something that bothers you. You react, and then it all kicks off. When Sophie took a little for Jay, it triggered a change in Jay's mind. He thinks she doesn't trust me. He feels hurt and defensive, so he reacts. Sophie can't see the change in Jay's mind. She can only see his reaction, so that's what she responds to. But Sophie has a change too. She thinks, we're going to be late. I better help her. She feels stressed and worried. You don't always know the reasons people do things. So before you react, remember to stop and think about what might be going on behind the action you see. Thank you. That was better. Um, <laughs> So I hope that you can see um, the, the takeaways that we're trying to put across there, the simple messages of understanding um, what someone else might be thinking, and that could be different to you, but also really small actions that you can take, like stopping and thinking. Um, the next is a live action video, and um, it is called You Say I Hear. Uh, so thank you. I think I just need some quiet time on my own. I don't love you anymore. I need some more help out the house. My mum would do a better job than you. We need to check our budget. You're spending too much. Do you want to lie, Jake? Wake up lazy. We've got a lot to do today. Oh, these are nappies are expensive. We bought the wrong nappies. Again. He woke up five times last night. Oh, I work so much harder than you. Hey, I'm home. Nothing, you have to say nothing. You're tired. You look awful. <laughs> Make sure it's locked into bed. You are a danger to our child. Thank you. Thanks very much for that. Um, again, I, hopefully that you can see that is lighthearted, but there, um, there are some simple and clear messages coming through that again about um, what we say can be heard completely, completely differently and taken in completely the wrong way and often how arguments start. Um, so that's just a little window into some of the content that parents can see through uh, the Me, You and Baby 2 um, course. Next slide, please. Okay, um, so I'm just going to finish by talking about practitioner training, um, as well as the digital resources that we provide for parents that we've been um, running through just now. We also provide training for practitioners and a digital practitioner guide to help them to use the resource with parents. And this really is critical to embedding such an early intervention resource into practice. And I think that um, Helen, you might touch upon that later when you're talking about how this has been rolled out in your area. Um, but this training and bringing practitioners on board and helping them to understand the importance of this resource really is uh, something that is vital alongside the digital resource itself. Um, this slide covers, covers the training in a nutshell, and it's really built on the strong foundations of um, OnePlus One's Brief Encounters training and um, How to Argue Better. Next slide, please. And just to finish with the fact that we've heard from practitioners that we've spoken to across England and Wales, 
um, that have been using me and baby two and have received uh, the practitioner training. And the feedback has been that they are really, they value the way that they can tailor me and baby two um, to the needs of the parents and the needs of their own practice. And practitioners are using this with parents in a self-directed way, semi-supported and fully supported. They're using it to open up difficult conversations. They're using it aside, um, alongside parents, um, over calls, in face-to-face -face sessions and in group work. So it really is a highly adaptable resource, both through the training um, and for parents using it in their own time at a pace that works for them. So that's it for me. I'm going to hand you over to Shannon now, and she is going to talk to you uh, in more depth about some of our more recent findings. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you, Verity. Hi, everyone. Um, next slide, please, Sally. So hi, so I'm Shannon Hurst, I'm the lead researcher at One Plus One, and I'm just going to speak a little bit about the evaluation of the training and the rollout of Me You Baby 2 that we've carried out, um, both um, our initial evaluation and then as part of a wider digital package in England and Wales that we've been doing over the last year. Next slide, please. So to start, just a few numbers on the training that we've carried out in England and Wales since last summer, just picking up on what Verity said. Um, so we have delivered um, authorities in England um, and we have delivered train the trainer to all 22 local authorities in Wales. So across England and Wales we have 82 facilitators trained through train the trainer who will then go and take our reducing parental conflict training back to their local authorities and roll that out with their practitioners. Um, across England and Wales we've seen that training be used in um, early help, early prevention and intervention, um, statutory services, children's services, and also just in generic services, so housing, education, health, things like that. Um, we've also trained 1,943 individual practitioners and had over 1,800 people register to our online courses um, through, that, through that licensing in England and Wales. Next slide, please, Sally. So just a little bit of uh, training feedback. So we obviously, we take pre-test and post-test questionnaires from practitioners just to make sure we're achieving our aims. Um, and so 99% of the trainees across England and Wales stated that they were either satisfied or very satisfied. 94% um, agreed that the training was relevant and 98% agreed that it was appropriate for their work. 94% uh, agreed that the training increased their confidence um, in working with parents. Um, and 96% it was um, increased their confidence in working with parents in conflict. And then 93% um, agreed that the training improved their skills and 97 um, agreed that the training improved their understanding for working with parents in conflict. So really like, you know, we, we really hope that we're achieving those aims. Obviously the last couple of years has been a bit of trial by fire in terms of effective training online. So we have tried to make our training really engaging and really relevant. Um, and we do that by also, um, you know, by not just having the, the background evidence and, you know, this is what all the evidence says and this is how you work with parents, but also giving practitioners the opportunity to really go through the resources and, you know, for me, you baby to really familiarise themselves with the resource so they go through what the parents go through. Um, next slide, please, Sally. So in terms of the evaluation of the programme, we've carried out two evaluations of Me, You, Baby 2. So our first one was for um, over two years, 2019 to 2021, um, with Universal... Oh, Shannon, we've lost you at really a critical time. <laughs> critical time. I think she might be completely gone. Are you yeah. able to step in? Yeah, yeah, I'll step in and I'll, I won't do nearly as good, <laughs> good a job as Shannon, but uh, oh, hang on. Is she there? No. OK. Um, yeah. So as Shannon said, uh, we carried out the first evaluation um, where me and baby two were sitting on the baby buddy app. Um, and then more recently, we have um, been training um, practitioners in Wales and England, as she said, um, and across all local authorities in Wales, and I think that it's available in about 68 local authorities in England. Um, and what we've been doing is gathering um, that 
kind of evidence over the period of uh, delivering the resource in Wales and now more recently working in England. So it's a kind of, you're there, Shannon. I'm basically saying we've got a kind of a culmination of findings from the very early evaluation yeah. um, to what we've been doing more recently in England and Wales. I'll just let you yeah. carry on. That's okay. Sorry. So I don't know where we got to. Did I did, did I get to analytics or how many people we had using it? Before no, you know? I don't think so. No. Okay, so I'm just going to go. Yeah, okay. So obviously we've had the two evaluations, one for universal users via BabyBuddy and one via the rollout in England and Wales. So across those two evaluations, we saw more than a thousand users, parents using me and Baby2, about a thousand for BabyBuddy and around 600 for England and Wales. Um, and the analytics indicate that when parents do use me and Baby2, they tend to progress through at least 70% of the resource and spend a really good amount of time per session, about 30 minutes to 108 minutes. Um, so those engagement figures kind of speak to what Verity has already told us about parents finding the resources relatable and accessible. So the reason we kind of I've combined these findings is that we've kind of found the same thing ab across both, which is really exciting. So what, we're, what, what that says is that we can have universal users using it on BabyBuddy and we can have early help and statutory service users using it in England and Wales. And it has the same impact, which, you know, which is fantastic. So that's why I've kind of I've put them together. Um, before users start me and baby two, we measure their relationship satisfaction, couple coping and their parental conflict. And then we measure it again once they've completed the resource and um, statistical analysis of the means. We compared the means and we found that following completion of me and baby two, users do report statistically significant reductions in conflict, significant increases in couple coping and significant increases in relationship satisfaction, which are the three things that we were really targeting there. Um, as well as the quantitative findings supporting the efficacy of Me, Baby 2, we also speak to parents who've used the resources and we collect qualitative data to better understand their experiences. So just in the following slides, I'm just going to speak a wee bit about um, the findings from our most recent set of interviews with parents from Wales who've used Me and Baby 2 following either referral from local flying start centres or through referral through their older children's schools. Um, next slide, please, Sally. So we use somatic analysis for this evaluation and we've identified a number of themes to explain parents' experience of the resources and what the impact's been. But today I'm just going to talk through three of them that I think are going to be the most interesting for you. Um, their motivation for using the resource, their learning and the impact that it's had on them, them and their relationship. So in terms of motivation, we found that the parents that we spoke to um, were mostly motivated by a desire to manage stress during the transition to parenthood and to be able to communicate better with their partner during this time. All the parents we spoke to acknowledged concerns about being able to kind of keep conflict at bay when they were sleep deprived or trying to adjust um, to their lives when they bought baby pandemic and felt that the additional resources were needed as like a boost um, for parents who couldn't access usual support during the transition to parenthood. Um, all the parents we spoke to just want to make sure the relationships were a positive place for the benefit of their children. Um, so those are a couple of quotes there um, from parents that we spoke to about that. Next slide, please, Sally. So the next thing that we identified was what parents learned from using me and baby two. And we found that there were kind of five main things common across all the parents we spoke to, which was the impact of conflict on children, how to communicate effectively, how to prevent conflict escalating, the impact of stress and the importance of emotional support. So most parents were already aware that conflict isn't good for children, but using me and baby two had kind of opened their eyes to the long-lasting consequences of it and also being aware of things like passive aggressive tones or the silent treatment and, and how children could also be affected by these um, and also awareness that conflict can affect the baby not just when children are able to communicate themselves was another takeaway for parents that we spoke to next slide please Sally I'm just a couple of quotes to highlight these but um, effective communication was another thing that parents had taken away. So things like speaking them for themselves, thinking about tone, less judgmental tones, um, making it about how they feel and not, you know, um, you do this to me, you make me feel awful, that, that, that kind of language. Um, the two main skills that parents spoke about in terms of conflict reduction were to just stop and think and to see things from the other person's perspective. So a lot of the parents we spoke to talk about, spoke about taking five, so just stopping, taking five minutes, you know, having a cup of tea, something like that before engaging in a conversation um, that they felt might escalate and just being able to see where their partner was coming from, help them to open up to like more effective means of communication rather than just descending into, um, into just destructive conflict. 
Um, the impact of stress was another big takeaway with parents, noting that, you know, thinking about where stress comes from and not only how they deal with their own stress, but how they deal with their partner's stress had helped them to kind of deconstruct it before it snowballed. Um, and finally, probably the thing that all of the parents we spoke to had found to be like a particular revelation for this resource was providing emotional support before practical support to their partners. A lot of the parents that we spoke to described themselves as fixes. So they, they'd not really realized how important it was just to listen to their partner and offer emotional support. And it was something that they found themselves going back to regularly. And um, in one mum's words, it had been a bit of a revelation, which, um, you know, I think we can all understand. Next slide, please, Sally. So the final theme was the difference that Miu Baby 2 had made or the impact. So we identified four main differences that parents had spoken about after using Miu Baby 2. Um, through the skills in Miu Baby 2, parents had found that their communication with their partner had improved. They, they were finding the techniques we described in the learning section just there and were helping them not only to communicate their own needs better, but to understand their partner's communication better and what their partner hoped to get out of any communications. This also fed into less conflict escalation. So along with staying calm and seeing things from the other person's point of view, one, um, one parent spoke about things that would you know, normally become an argument or simmer away in the background you know, they, they were dealing with them more effectively and the conflict wasn't so prolonged and, and, and kind of destructive. Parents also spoke about like positive effects to their relationship as a result of this. Um, through improved communication and this conflict, obviously, they were getting along better. So, you know, um, many parents seemed to indicate they were better able to understand their partner and be there for them. And they were just dealing with things together more effectively, um, you know, being a team, as it were, um, for when baby arrived. And, and finally, and perhaps the most important impact has been improved outcomes for children. Parents who had already had baby or who had had baby since using Miu Baby 2 spoke about not arguing in front of baby and being able to work together better as parents. Um, parents who had older children had acknowledged that their children seemed happier and enjoyed having mum and dad get along around them. Um, I guess overall parents who are in like happy, less conflicted relationships are better able to focus their attention on parenting and modeling healthy relationships to their children. So regardless of whether they're babies or toddlers or older. And those parents that we spoke to felt me, baby too, would really help them with that. So next slide, there's a couple of, uh, couple of quotes there as well. Um, yeah, that, that top one's kind of my favorite. This, this mom um, had gotten pregnant just before COVID and had her baby, you know, in the height of the pandemic. Um, and, yeah, it, I, I just thought that was really lovely that they were able to maintain that equilibrium um, despite going through an incredibly stressful pregnancy and, and early years. Um, so that's just a wee rundown of our evaluation so far. Um, you know, really positive to see not only the statistical significance, which as a researcher, I'm always like, yay, but um, also to speak to the parents and actually seeing the impact it's having in their, in their real life and in their day to day. Um, so now I'll pass on to Helen Armstrong from Lancashire, who's going to speak about the rollout of Me Baby 2 as part of their RPC officer offer. Thank okay. you. Right. Okay, so are my slides going to come on? Is that... Um... Next slide. Oh, yeah, here I am. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, afternoon, everybody. So um, yeah, I've come here really, I think I've been invited to give it a bit of an honest appraisal of what we've been doing in Lancashire. Um, I'll just explain a little bit about myself. So um, I was um, the I am the RPC lead, lead for Lancashire. But I first came across One Plus One when I was um, inv involved in the RPC program. So I had um, spent a, a, a kind of a couple of years um, as a regional in integration lead for the re uh, reducing um, parental conflict program. So I came across One Plus One and the Me You Baby um, Two app there and fabulous resource um, as everybody knows and um, when I came back to Lancashire I took on the role of RPC lead so I really wanted to make things work for us in Lancashire um, in terms of getting um, a response to RPC fully Im embedded so hopefully at some point this afternoon I don't know if she's here yet we've got um, Sharon as she's one of our senior practitioners and Lancashire is a very big county I say this to everybody Lancashire is so huge <laughs> Um, we've got 12 districts um, and um, one of those districts Sharon works in, it's in West Lancashire, so quite close to Liverpool. Um, so she was going to come and talk about um, her experience of um, in the front line in terms of what we've been trying to do with Me You um, Baby 2 app. But if you can move on to the next slide and I will 
So I'll just give you a little bit of a context for where we are in Lancashire and what we've been trying to achieve. So um, within this, the last kind of year of funding that we've been, um, we've received, we developed the Pan Lancashire uh, relationship tool. What we wanted to do was really try and embed on a multi-agency um, approach and an, an awareness of the impact of, of parental conflict, but also on that low level of um, informal support, be able to give practitioners um, who have anybody who has anything to do with children, young people and their families, some basic tools by which they can start having those conversations and start providing that support. So we developed the um, Pan Lancashire Relationship Toolkit with Blackpool and Blackpool and um, Blackburn with Darwin. And, um, and that has worked well. We had training that went alongside that um, and it's been cascaded out. And um, what I would like to do is develop that further. I'd like to develop a, a website and some further resource. And I know um, one plus one, maybe the people to go to, because I'm, I'm probably quite interested in your cards um, because I think they would be great. We need some strategies that parents, things that parents can take home with them. Very parent friendly. So, um, so we're kind of thinking about next time. So we've also purchased a, um, a level three, which is the IF term for level three, um, healthy relationships course. So our in, with it, embedded within early help now, we have this six stage intervention that can be delivered as a one-to-one -one family support, um, but also in co a, a course as well. And that's for parents that are still together. We're looking at purchasing the, um, the one for the parents who are separated as well. And that's gonna be in our next stage. Um, we've also developed relationship leaders and champions in each of our 10 districts. So we've got two of our districts are combined into one. Uh, so we've got actually got 10. I was lying then when I said 12. <laughs> but we have, yeah, they're, they're just, just two combined districts. Um, so, yeah, we've got those um, leaders and champions working and hopefully um, their role will be expanding and um, they'll be able to support what's going on in their districts. So that's kind of where we started from, but important to all that, and if you can move on to the next slide, um, the Me You Baby 2 app was really kind of a really important element of this strategy um, because it, we thought it actually would really be um, um, work well as a kind of an integrate what we were trying to do with the other work. So um, we, uh, we knew that there was very little available for expecting parents, but then within our children's centre world, we did develop a birth and beyond um, universal intervention that went ran alongside midwifery and health visitors that provided an element of relationship support within that. So it was looking at the impact that the arrival of a baby would have on a relationship, but that has kind of, it, it has gone by the by really it just dropped out of um, what we were doing and it was no longer a priority for our early help service and we do this in a much more targeted way so with the absence of that we thought the me you baby two up would be perfect um, and we really thought that what we would be able to do is use that app um, in a targeted way for our um, early help casework for the families that we um, have an open early help episode with um, so we bought the license, we got our, our relationship leaders to do the training um, and um, we had promotional leaflets and it all went really, really well. The training was very well received um, and um, the practitioner guidance was cascaded in that way. I've attended health visitors meetings, so it was two pronged really. We thought it's really important that our service had promoted the use of the app with our um, early help um, casework and but also through health visitors as well so it was really the way that um, the app was cascaded out was via the training for our uh, relationship leaders but just spreading the word really and that's maybe I was a bit naive in thinking spreading the word would kind of lead to support in, in getting parents to access the app so uh, if you move to the next one this is a little bit about kind of what actually happened. So we know that the take up of the app has been really low in Lancashire. Um, and we do know that it's not because parents have tried it and not liked it. Um, it's because I think at a practitioner level, we've had barriers to them actually supporting parents in using the, um, the app. Um, and I think we've got to explore the reasons why. So I have, 
and this is why I wanted Sharon to come along. So for our service, one of the, so I've been asking for some feedback. So I think um, one of the things that our practitioners are saying is that there's very few expectant parents that are on our caseload at the moment, which is interesting. Um, so we did a kind of a little bit of a look into our data and it actually that was borne out with what our data is telling us. We've got at the moment in our open early help cases, we've got 33 expectant um, parents. So that's like an unborn baby in that family. That's how it comes in the data. Um, so that is low. Um, oh, I think. Oh, Sharon's trying to get in and she can't get in. <laughs> Maybe she needs to be let in through the lobby. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll carry on and hopefully Sharon will be able to come in and and, um, and join in. Um, so, yeah, with 33, which actually contrasted to, I think we've got about 800 early help episodes. So that is small. So I think, you know, I'm really keen to make this work. So we have got 33. So those 33 should have had the app and they haven't. So I'd look into that reason why not. But also I think we need to explore why we've got quite a low caseload. I mean, we know that we haven't had a drastic fall in um, birth rate in Lancashire. Um, and I imagine that not all those that um, are having babies in Lancashire can do so without this, you know, a little bit of early help support as well. So I'm thinking, you know, there's something gone astray with our referral pathways um, and we've certainly got to look into that we've been through a kind of restructure in our early help service we've obviously like a lot of other early help services have moved up the thresholds um, we've got um, a neighborhood and a community offer where I think we need to promote more our uh, the me you baby too but I think we've also got to look at how to support our practitioners in thinking this is something that they need to is they all seem enthusiastic about it but I think it's again about embedding that um routine inquiry about relationships about um I think one one I did ask the practitioner and she said she said came to me and said I've got a, a mum that this would be wonderful for brilliant I'm going to so a couple of weeks later I said how did it go oh no I haven't I haven't introduced the app because I just never got round to finding the opportune moment. Like, oh. um, so I think we've got to work with our practitioners more and helping them have those conversations and introducing the app. So, um, yeah, I, I just think and, and health visitors again. So I went to a, um, a health visitor conference and gave them all the information about the app. How, the, how to use it, how to get the um, the practitioner guidance. And they all seemed enthusiastic, but nothing really has come as of consequences has arisen from that. And again, health assistants, when you ask for their feedback, it's time constraints. They've got so many things that they have to do. Um, and I think we've heard, we, we, we're familiar with these kind of, with these um, statements really. Um, and there's the, what they say is there's lots of different apps that they've been told that they need to be, you know, this, I, I don't know what they are. I haven't any knowledge of that, but apparently there's lots of different things that they've been asked to promote with families. So I think we've got to really do some exploration as to, as to why it is. And I think it is, it is definitely a practitioner level. Sharon's here now. I don't know, if, Sharon, have you? <laughs> so Sharon can introduce herself to everybody. Hi, I'm Sharon Barrett and I'm a senior practitioner from um, the West Lancs area of Lancashire. Um, I think that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, mean, I was just explaining why we, we've had a really low take up of, um, of the use of Me You Baby 2. And I was trying to kind of really find out why. And one of the things I know you were suggesting is that we have less babies or expectant parents on our caseload yeah we have really minimal babies on the caseload um, and what we tend to find is when we do have babies on the caseload tend to be single parents so um and there's single parents without support of a partner so no conflict actually in that relationship at that point um, and i think one of the other things that we found is that um the ones that we do have that are together in 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 partners um are very much the hard to reach families that 
um, wouldn't necessarily use an app on their own anyway. It would have to be with um, a member of staff there to sort of guide them along with it. And it, it also depends on what um, data they've got on the phone, the mobile connection and all those kind of things. Um, and, and if in fact they've got any data, because we, we do tend to work with families that don't have um, data packages on the phone like we would get, they get like top ups and things like that still. So that is another um, mm. sort of block to the, the hard to reach families that don't have that that phone contract that, that we all sort of have. Yeah. I mean, so I suppose one way around that would be um, using uh, in centres using LCC, you know, using a computer, I suppose. Um, that we don't have, we don't have the capacity to do that because we haven't got those, those things in centres anymore. Uh, um, uh, no, that's maybe something we could pick, pick up in Lancashire, actually. I've, I've made a note of that in terms of that. Um, I'm just asking one plus one. I mean, they're saying about it for single, you know, like a mums to be that are on their own, who are not in a relationship. I mean, is there, have you got any, um, because there are other relationships in their lives, I wondered whether you would think that it's still applicable to use the app or, I mean, has there been any kind of um, research or exploration of that in terms of single parents and the use of the app? Yeah, I, I can take that. Yeah. So um, obviously it's designed kind of to support mm. the couple relationship. Yes. But um, what we found across all of our resources is that parents do really well just using it on their own. Because if one parent is using is developing those conflict and communication skills and those stress management skills, then it kind of trickles into the other person, whether they're together or separated. Um, we did have a, a mum in Essex that we spoke to when we did the baby buddy evaluation. And um, she had actually been using it. So she had nothing to do with her ex-partner. And um, her mum was like her birthing partner. And she would actually use some of the skills that she'd been learning in me and baby too, to help her communicate a bit better with her mum during that stressful transition to um, parenthood time. So yeah, um, something that comes back all the time when I speak to parents is how applicable they find these skills across the board for relationships. I speak to people who like, oh, I do this at work now. One woman um, I spoke to worked for the RSPCA and she said it, it had helped her to understand kind of the, the people who were dropping their dogs off and things like that and how she engaged mm -hmm. with them in, the, in her communications there. Um, so yeah, absolutely can be used by, um, yeah. by, single, by single people across a variety of relationships or if they're in that kind of separated parent relationship and just helping them to improve their communication and conflict resolution for sure yeah yeah I think that's right because I think quite quite often if you have um so a, a, a mum to be identifies herself as single it's likely that she will have some contact with with the um dad very it is very highly likely um and they will need to establish a co-parenting relationship um so the some of the things although you know some of it they may may put them off but some of the actual and that's where the practitioner can help them i suppose um in accessing the bits that are applicable to them um that are actually about trying to work out better communication in the co-parenting relationship so um so it's still relevant but yeah i think we've just got a little bit i think maybe i was naive in my approach actually um, thinking that actually you just could just put the word out and people you know <laughs> will go oh yeah so I think a lesson is that you've and I know other local authorities have taken a very different more proactive um, kind of um, approach where they would give out licenses not just kind of what we've kind of seen a blanket approach in Lancashire saying anybody in Lancashire if they follow the user password can actually access so maybe we should have been a little bit more targeted and more but it's very difficult as saying in a big county to be to be able to do that um and i did think it would work but it, obviously we need to do i think um one thing that we want to do this this time around as well is to roll all this learning into kind of next year and how we can help with embedding this resource but our, all of our other digital resources too i know that shannon is um setting up kind of where the resources are available um geographic 
uh, focus groups where um, practitioners can come together and then she can speak to them across the different areas to share learning, how it's worked, how they've rolled it out, how they've tackled these barriers. Um, because, you know, people have got similar barriers in different areas and, you know, some, as you say, much larger areas. Um, comparatively, how does that work and what's been successful for them? I know that, um, that Shannon's working on that. Um, which we really want to roll into next year to be able to kind of be much more um, collaborative with practitioners and different local authorities so that we can share the learning, basically. Um, and I was just also going to pick up on the digital poverty point as well, and as someone's put a comment as in the chat, um, Sharon Reeve. Um, so we've, we've worked previously with um, the Good Things Foundation I don't know if any of you are aware of them, but they're a charity that exists to, uh, you know, one of one of their key aims is is to kind of um, tackle digital poverty. And we've been in touch with them about the fact that we're rolling out this digital resource, you know, across loads of local authorities in England, all of them in Wales. Um, and we know that this is a real, really significant barrier. So um, we are hoping to be able to talk with them more about how we can, you know, understand this better and, um if Sharon, you were saying that this is quite a big issue for your caseload, if you'd be happy to um, for us to get in touch with you, I know that that kind of thing, you know, having those discussions would be really, really helpful to add to that um, information. I'll drop you a message in the chat. Thank you very much. Um, there's a few questions coming in in the chat and the Q and A. I wonder if we can move on to those. Um, one of them that's come up is is around. Um, is the course free for parents by the Baby Buddy app or do local authorities need to pay for it um, in order for residents to access it? So the course was over the evaluation period um, free on the Baby Buddy app, but that's no longer the case. Um, it is um, being licensed by local authorities in England, um, all in Wales. So anybody who's in Wales, every single local authority has got access to it. Um, and I think, as I said earlier, about 60 local authorities in England have um, purchased it, the, the license. So anybody in those areas can use them. I think um, Tabitha and Yolanta, my colleagues who are um, on the chat, um, were responding to people about those questions. So I think uh, we can provide you with the information, obviously, as to where um, which local authorities are using it um, and how you can access it that way. Great. So I think that links to the other question about if people are in voluntary sector organisations, if they find out from you if they're in one of those local authorities and then they can contact Correct. you. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And in those areas, um, we would always have run at least one training programme, if not many. Mm -hmm. um, and some local authorities went for train the trainer, so they could be rolling out train the trainer across the year. Um, so the people have taken a, 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 diff, a kind of varied approach. Thanks, Rosie. And our, we've got another question, which is, I think we've already covered around the, the issue we're just discussing around um, single parents and, and how the app can help people to work with the other relationships in their lives. If anybody's got any other questions, that's the questions that we've got through our Q&A at the moment. If anyone's got any other questions, please do drop them into the Q&A now so that we can pick them up. Um, I don't know if there's anything else from our speakers that you would like to cover. Um, um, Lorna, we'd love it to be available in Scotland. <laughs> um, we have found it really difficult to connect with people um, that we could talk to, um, you know, in the different localities across Scotland, but we would absolutely love to. It's definitely on our, um, on our radar. So if you have any contacts that you'd like to put us in touch with, then uh, yeah, we'd be, that'd be great. Sorry, Sally, I just saw that pop up and I was like, yeah, that's I great. really want to be in Scotland. Um, can individual parents pay to access the course in a self-directed capacity? So is there anybody not in your area? No. no. Great, well, I think that's all of the questions answered. Uh, there's a question about cost of the license just come in. I don't know if that's something you're able to share or where, maybe it's variable. And Janet says, how many are, how much are the licenses? Um, Janet, uh, my, so my colleague Yolanta, um, if you pop 
Janet, if you pop your email address in into the chat, then um, my colleague Yolanda will be able to get in touch with you about that. It's because it's all varied, we've got different packages and things. Um, and, and a final question is how do we find out where it's licensed? Um, so we've obviously got contact details. If I share your final slide again, it's got some contact details on it. Um, and then people can see and follow up um, yeah. on where to go with that. Mm -hmm. That's final contact details for anybody who wants to either find out if this is already operating in the area or get in touch with the team about, um, about joining. We can circulate those. Okay, so I think that's has come to an end. Um, thank you very, very much to Verity, Shannon, Sharon and Helen um, for coming to join us today and for sharing that all of that brilliant insight and learning. And, and what an amazing resource. I'm sure you can tell by the chat, lots of people have got ideas firing from that and thinking about how they can, how can, they can use the app and the learning from it. Um, so thank you very much. And thank you to everybody who's joined us today. Um, this recording of this webinar will be available on our YouTube channel. So anybody who wants to share their what they've heard about with colleagues, um, we can share that link. And you'll also find on there um, recordings of all of our other lunchtime webinar series. So thank you very much for your time. Um, it's been really lovely to hear from you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Thanks, Thanks very you. much. Thanks everyone.